Hello, and welcome to Animal Chiropractic Clinic Chatter, a podcast where Dr. O, from all creatures, every spine, interviews doctors and animal owners that utilize animal chiropractic to get their unique perspectives. Yes, it's really a thing. Dr. O utilizes his 30 years of experience as both an animal chiropractor and veterinarian, and to dig deep into the discussion of complex issues affecting the lives of your animal friends and companions. Join us for this educational episode. Thanks for joining us for this portion of the episode as Dr. O begins to answer the question, What is animal chiropractic? He will look at how the chiropractic adjustment is a valuable and viable treatment for what ails your animals. What is animal chiropractic? Animal chiropractic is pretty simple. It's the identification and removal of vertebral subluxation. Nervous system interference. Um, what's that do? Well, nervous system interference decreases the ability of the body to uh, do what it's supposed to do, to heal from above, down, inside, out. It affects the ability of every organ in the body, the immune system, the kidneys, the liver, everything to work properly. It is the utmost thing. Chiropractors, animal chiropractors, remove these vertebral subluxations using their hands and allow the animal's nervous system to go back to 100%. But what's your diagnosis? Vertebral subluxation, and that's enough. So anyway, the other day, I was talking to a buddy and uh, his dad has a new diagnosis, sarcopenia. Sarcopenia is the loss of muscle mass related to aging. It's normal to lose some, but this is excessive. Sarcopenia affects gait, balance, and overall ability to perform daily tasks. Researchers have believed that this deterioration was inevitable, but they're now beginning to look into treatment options that might prevent or slow down the process. Hmm. Vertebral subluxations cause affecting gait, balance, and overall ability to prevent to perform daily tasks. Those are what vertebral subluxations do. Chiropractic removes vertebral subluxations and restores the body's ability, the body's ability to have normal gait, balance, and perform daily tasks as we need to. Also, one of the causes of sarcopenia, decreased physical activity. Yeah, decreased physical activity definitely causes problems. Your animal lays around on the couch all day, stands in a stall all day. You know what? They're going to have subluxation. They're also going to have loss of muscle mass. Yeah. Anyway, so maybe there's some other causes. Hmm. Researchers currently believe that sarcopenia causes include a reduction in the nerve cells that send signals from the brain to tell the muscles to move. Wow. What does a vertebral subluxation do? It causes a reduction in the nerve cells that send signals from the brain to tell the body the muscles to move. How do chiropractors get rid of it? They use their hands perform a very specific adjustment that removes these vertebral subluxations and allows the body's ability, the nervous system, to communicate and tell the muscles to move. What are the researchers doing? Well, they're looking at things like drugs and, and you know, specific exercises and, and diet. Diet's great. Yep, we got to have good food in order for our animals to perform an ability to hold their adjustment. you got to have exercise. But without nervous system function, the diet can't work, doesn't matter what you feed them, if the nervous system isn't working, they're not going to get healthy. And without the nervous system, exercise won't allow muscles to form. Because we know that we can cause muscle atrophy or sar sarcopenia, you know, by not using a muscle, it takes about seven weeks for that to show up, or by 
decreasing innervation to a muscle, it takes about seven days. So, lack of innervation to a muscle causes sarcopenia. Yep. The loss of muscle mass related to aging because, you know, if you're seven days older than you were before, that's aging. So, remember, vertebral subluxation, sarcopenia, whichever you decide to call it, how you want to treat it is entirely up to you. But if you allow the body to heal itself above, down, inside out, your animals can get rid of their sarcopenia a whole lot faster if you keep them adjusted by a certified animal chiropractic. And that's what animal chiropractic is about. The identification and the removal of vertebral subluxation to allow the body's innate ability to heal itself. So keep adjusted and have a great day. Make sure to visit our website, allcreatureseveryspine.com, where you can subscribe to the show and learn more about getting your animals adjusted. If you are in the Meridian, Texas area, drop in on a Tuesday afternoon to get your animals adjusted. If that isn't possible, schedule a consultation on your animal's health with Dr. O. You can also purchase a copy of Dr. O's book. Yes, it's really a thing. Heroes come in all shapes and sizes. For me, my hero is Frank, my best friend. But even the greatest heroes need help sometimes. Frank and I were at the park the other day when he started limping and favoring his left leg. I didn't see what happened, but I could tell something was wrong. So we went to see Frank's favorite vet, Yvette. Yvette the vet. After running some tests, she determined that Frank had torn his ACL. His best option was surgery. But unfortunately for me, surgery wasn't an option. So what could I possibly do to be a hero to my hurting hero? That was when Yvette told us about Hero Braces. She took a quick cast of his leg and said this mold would be used to create a biomechanically designed stifle brace, custom made just for Frank, allowing his body's natural healing processes to take over and stabilize the knee. About two weeks later, she fitted the brace and gave us the green light to walk, hike, and snuggle and do all the activities that Frank and I were used to doing. It was that simple. Hero braces are lightweight don't stretch or tear and are durably designed to last the life of your dog. So Frank can get back to being Frank. Like I said, heroes come in all shapes and sizes. And lucky for us, so do hero braces. Your active dog needs more than water to rehydrate. Replenish Dog Water Supplement is an all-natural powdered water flavoring. Prevents dehydration and provides vitamins for your dog. Created by a veterinarian and rooted in science. Give your dog the care they deserve with Replenish. Standard Process is a third-generation family-owned company in rural Wisconsin. You could say we just make nutritional supplements, but we know we're changing lives. We grow ingredients on our own certified organic farm without pesticides or herbicides because we think they should be as close to nature as possible. Quality is our priority. That's why we do everything right here, from hand picking the seeds to delivery, so you know exactly what goes into every bottle. Join us as Dr. O interviews a certified chiropractor, veterinarian, or an animal owner. These enthusiastic people explain how they utilize animal chiropractic to alter the lives of the animals in their communities. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another episode of Animal Chiropractic Clinic Chatter and I'm your host, Dr. O. Today, we have the lovely Dr. Andy Ibera. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, thank you for having me. So I have been an animal chiropractor for three years now. I started right when I graduated regular chiropractic school as well. And my practice is mostly animals actually. It's almost split, but more on the animal side. And I treat small animals. So a lot of dogs and some cats. Cool. Um, so how do you think, I mean, you didn't have a practice beforehand, but 
you know, in talking to some of your classmates and stuff, how do you think animal chiropractic has helped your practice? Well, it's helped in the, so when I was in chiropractic school, I didn't really have like a niche or really know what specialty I wanted to go into until I did animal chiropractic. So it definitely helped me narrow things down and base my whole practice off of that. Whereas, you know, if I hadn't done it, I would still probably be searching for that thing that I really, really enjoy doing. So that, that really helped me in that way. Good. All right. And how about, um, so you're what, three years out now? And yes. how would you rate your clinic as successful? I, I would consider it successful. Um, I'm doing something that I love and I'm get, getting to help a lot of animals and their owners as well. So, so I would consider that successful. Good. All right. And you're staying busy even through the COVID, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the animal part of it hasn't slowed down throughout, throughout all of this. So that's been really nice. Okay, cool. All right. So tell us about your biggest animal win. So my biggest and most dramatic, I guess you could say win would be a dog. His name was Murr and he's a, he's a bigger dog. He's a mix and his owner brought him to me, but she had to have her son help her because he had to carry him. Murr was totally limp. He couldn't even hold his head up, nothing. So they brought him in, they laid him on the floor on his side because he couldn't get up straight. And she told me that this had just happened a few days before that. She wasn't exactly sure because she didn't see what happened, but he just started to go down more and more each day. And she took him to the vet first and they wanted to put him down because they didn't they didn't know what had happened, but they they suggested putting him down because his quality of life was not good. He hadn't pooped or peed in four days. He wasn't really interested in eating. And so she had an appointment to put him down, but she searched around and somehow found me and just thought she was gonna give it a last a last chance. So they brought him in. I worked on him and after that first appointment she said he was moving his head a lot more he was eating and then after the second appointment which was a few days after that she said he got out of the car like he stood up for the first time and he he went onto the grass and he peed and he pooped and then the third time he actually this was probably a week later he walked out of my office so i got to see him walk out on that third time and that was that was probably one of the most dramatic and more successful stories that i've had but it was it was really awesome and you know it's really nice for the owners too cuz they don't know what else to do so they just she gave it her all and searched around and thank god she found chiropractic for him right yep cool all right so um have there been any that what what do you wish all the animal owners in your area knew about animal chiropractic i wish that they all knew that it's not only for when something bad happens to your animal don't wait until they can't walk anymore or until their back legs are paralyzed it's i wish everyone would look at it more as preventative like it's for like people. We don't wait until our teeth are rotting to go to the dentist. We get our teeth cleaned or we should. We get a checkup every year. So I wish owners would take a more preventative approach with it from the moment that their their animals young because birth is a very traumatic event. So from then on there could be issues that don't show up until later. So I wish they would all, you know, keep up with it regularly throughout their animal's entire life and not wait until something really bad happens. Cool. Um, so what about the veterinarians and chiropractors in your area? What do you wish they knew? I wish they knew how much of an effect it had on animals. I don't think people realize until they've witnessed it, you know, it, it really does save animals' lives. And aside from that, it will help you grow your practice. If you're a chiropractor, it'll bring in a lot of people patients as well and if you're a vet you have a lot more tools that you can utilize before you go to 
drugs or surgeries. Okay. All right. So let's talk logistics and legalities for just a minute. Cause I know you're in a state where, you know, we need, uh, you need a veterinary referral. And I hear all the time about how hard that is to get. Have you found that difficult or have you found ways to get referrals on most patients? Yeah, I have found it to be difficult. I would say there's maybe like 30 to 40% of veterinarians that don't want to sign off because they're, they're not really sure what animal chiropractic is about and for their liability reasons. So it has been pretty difficult, but the best way that I've done it is, you know, the owner is the one that goes and approaches their vet telling them that they want this. And, and then I always make myself available if they want any of my notes or want to talk to me and find out more. Cool. So, you know, and, and if their vet absolutely says no, then you, most of the time your clients are willing to go to a different vet and get the referral, correct? Yeah. Yeah. If they want animal chiropractic, they're going to find a way to get it and they'll go to a different vet to get their dog examined and get that referral signed. Yeah. Cool. All right. So it's important that we stay within the law, but it is doable. And obviously, you know, you, your practice is not suffering because of that. You know, if we had direct soup, if you, if you had direct access, how busy would you be? I would probably be at least twice as busy. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we'll work on that all in all 50 states, but for now. All right. Um, any parting words for, for owners and, and um, how about students of animal chiropractic? Students. Yes. I would say get all your modules done as fast as you can and really like appreciate when you're, when you're doing the modules, cause it's nice to be surrounded by other animal chiropractors or soon to be animal chiropractors, you know, ask questions. And it's really nice that you get a lot of hands-on experience. So you walk out, you know, knowing how to adjust animals, being able to do it right after that. So you're, you're more confident each time you go for sure. So define hands-on because I mean, I've, I've heard, you know, everybody like, oh, yeah, we had our hands on animals every day, no matter what school they go to. So, and yes. you, you went to one program, you went to our program, but you have some friends that went to other programs. So tell us. Yeah, hands by hands on, I mean, you adjust a lot of horses and a lot of dogs. And I lost count of how many we did because it was a lot. You know, we go to the the dog rescue and adjust the animals there. And then there's a lot of, we have a lot of horses to adjust. So you're not only setting up and feeling everything, but you're actually doing the adjusting. So, you know, that animal is depending on you that weekend to adjust them and, and do everything that you just learned. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And, and in, we're in a, um, so do you get any immediate gratification when you're here? From my what? Do you get any immediate gratification when you're here? The animals, do they? Yeah, yeah, you can, and you can tell by their behavior too. You know, at first they might be a little timid, especially if they've never had an adjustment, they're not sure what you're gonna do to them, but then you just notice them relax and at the end they're friendlier and whatever pain they were probably feeling isn't quite there anymore. So they shake it off and then they're happy. Cool. Yeah, they do great. All right. So uh, what about maintenance? How often, you know, how many people, once you get them going, continue to come for maintenance? Yeah, maintenance. I, I always try to get everyone on maintenance. Um, try, most likely it's once a month, you know, unless they have more severe issues, kind of just depending. And there's some people that do maintenance, others don't. And they, and they wait until their dog or cat has that same issue. And then it takes a few to get them going again. Whereas if they did maintenance, they would be good to go and just maintain that. So. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, is there anything that you wish you would have learned more of at, in, in school? 
or animal chiropractic school, sorry. I guess just the best ways to reach out to vets that don't quite get what animal chiropractic is, that would probably be one of the biggest things in getting them on board to also refer to you and send those cases that they can't help with to you. All right. Awesome. Have a great day. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Dr. O. All right. Bye now. If you are or know a veterinarian or chiropractor or a student of either of these professions, visit our website, Animal Chiropractic Education Source, to see how to become certified in animal chiropractic. Start improving the lives of the animals around you. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the ACES channels so that you never miss an exciting episode.